Sony, oh, this is a rumor, so disclaimer. So this is a, um, an insider who claims that Sony has approached every major third party um, to try to get exclusive rights on some of their biggest titles. Now, because this is a rumor, um, I can't really like, you know, <laughs> confirm. Speak to the quality of it. Yeah, but I just want to say that it shows a couple things. Uh, it shows a stark contrast between what Sony's trying to do and what Xbox is trying to do, or uh, Microsoft is trying to do. Uh, Microsoft is trying to have this, <laughs> you know, 100 game library that anybody can play on their computer, their Xbox, and their phone. Um, they're trying to get as many titles out there as possible, but they're not trying to restrict them to just their console because they want you to be able to play everywhere. Um, and then Sony, they're going the exclus exclusive route where they're like, no, 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 you, you have to have a PlayStation to play this game. Um, so, and it's been a winning, I can't, it's been a winning formula for Sony this past generation. I, you know, that's just how it is. Um, they have been getting a lot of players because of their exclusive titles. I mean, Ghost of Tsushima. That is a wildly popular game, and it's amazing. And you can only get it on a PlayStation. And um, now, part of the thing here is that they... It, it, the rumor says that they're offering top dollar, so they're going and they're 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 just trying to buy these games. And apparently, uh, the rumor also says that Microsoft isn't willing to compete with with their offering the the cost that they're they're willing to pay. They're not able to compete, probably because there's yeah. too money buying studios. Yes. <laughs> um, that are now the games. Yes. Now. Um, this might be, uh, there's a lot of Sony fans out there. I love, you know, PlayStation. I've had it forever. Um, I had the first PlayStation. That was one of my favorite consoles of all time. Um, but when I was a kid, I used to hate console exclusives. I used to hate the fact that only my friends could play Final Fantasy when I had a Sega Genesis. You know, <laughs> it used to drive me insane. And, and as I got older... I have enough money where I can buy multiple consoles, but let's be real, not everyone can. And I don't think that trying to go around buying up all these games and just console locking it is good for gamers. It it makes me feel like we're going backwards to the days where, you know, if you had a Sega Genesis, you couldn't play certain games if you, you know, it, it just I don't know, how do you feel about it? I disagree. <laughs> okay. I disagree. And uh, the reason being is the reason why Sony is winning the console war right now. Exclusive yeah. are incredibly important. And yes, I will, I will concede that back in the day, it was a huge problem because as kids, we couldn't gain access to, you know, whatever the Super Nintendo had versus the Sega Genesis. Yeah, and 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 that problem exists right now in terms of the PlayStation Five and the Xbox One. Yeah, but at the same time, you really, you you the, these are all products, and you, and you're making a decision as to which product speaks the most to you. So if if one person only has Nintendo Switch, then I mean you're well you're wearing a Zelda shirt. Zelda's only been on the Nintendo Nintendo consoles. So, yeah, yeah, I know. So, so if you want a Zelda game, you you buy a Nintendo console, yes. and that that's a selling point. These these people aren't there aren't here for charity. They're trying to sell a product, and the best way they can do that is via exclusives. What yes. what titles do they have that's most enticing to you? Back then, I was a Sega Genesis kid, and what was enticing to me was stuff like Sonic, was stuff like Streets of Rage. I loved Vector Man, and Earthworm Jim was arguably the best on the Sega Genesis. I'm just saying. Mortal Kombat had blood yeah. on the Sega Genesis version, while uh, Super Nintendo didn't. Yeah, yeah. 
you know. Uh, by the way, they're they they're announcing a new Earthworm Jim. Um, the trailer did not look good, <laughs> <laughs> but apparently it's going to be exclusive for the new Amiga console coming out. That that just sounds rough. All it does. all around, all around. That sounds yeah. rough. It, it does right. sound rough. But in terms of the exclusives, I mean, Sony is playing the the game while Me- Xbox isn't, and I think that's Xbox's yeah. problem. And yeah. I mean, we're, 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 it's it's weird because we're having this discussion about not having exclusives, but at the same time dictating our purchases because of exclusives, not yeah. just solely on the hardware. Yeah, and, um, and 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 that's why we were talking about Halo Infinite the way that we were. It's because it's exclusive and it needs to sell, and it's it, it it doesn't look like it is. It looks like it's taking a giant step back when it should be yes when it should be a showcase. So yeah. I, I think Sony yeah. is right in doing so, and Xbox, I think they're kind of like grandstanding a little bit and like, no, we're not doing this. But they used to do it. They had they had console exclusivity for a number of items. I think Modern Warfare Remastered was a a, a pretty big one. Uh, was yes. was an exclusive for like a year or something like that. They've played. I believe the game. so. They've been a part of it, and now they're just yeah. No, oh, we're no longer. They're all playing. guilty. Yeah. Yeah, they're all guilty. But what I'm saying is, there's a difference between having some exclusives and going to every single third party studio and trying to hoard all their games. Because that's what I look at it like. I look at it like hoarding. Like, no, no, you have to come to PlayStation. Don't go to PC. Don't go to Xbox. Don't go to Switch. You have to come to PlayStation. I look at that as an anti-consumer practice. Every single third party, wrap your head around that. That means they're going to try to get Grand Theft Auto. That means they're going to, you know what I mean? Like, there's some games that I just want to play on my play uh, on my computer, even though I have a PlayStation. I would just rather play it on my computer. You know, I mean, I mean you're, you're you're saying that as you're saying that you're also defeating the purpose of getting a PlayStation Five. Why get a PlayStation 5 if you want to play them on PC? Because the the whole point of a, a look, look I'm not <laughs> saying I'm not saying that um, the the reason I like consoles is uh, because of the convenience factor and also because of the fact that I can buy the physical media. You can't buy the physical media for PC. You know they don't sell physical PC games anymore. They don't exist. So as a collector, I prefer consoles for that, right? But some games just run better on PC, man. That's just the way it is. All the Dark Souls games are way better on PC. Way better. And you know me. I've always played the, uh, the Dark Souls games on PC for that reason. And um, it, it just seems like... It just seems greedy to me to try to purchase all these games... And just console lock them. I mean, that's it, it. Just seems greedy. That's just that's just how I view it. I mean, I mean, an argument against that would be that even first party exclusives like Death Stranding and Horizon Zero Dawn recently came out on PC, and so it doesn't exclude them completely from coming out on PC, but on other consoles it does. Now, would that change your mind at all? Yeah, that would change my mind because that that would be better because there's so many PC gamers and and most people have a PC. A lot of people have a PC because of school or you know work or whatever. Yeah, but a gaming PC versus a PC to do schoolwork is completely different. I I know I know, but what I'm saying is is that they already have the base hardware. You know, they could buy a, a graphics card for it or whatever, right? Um, Usually, that kind, of, that kind of like avalanches into requiring other things. <laughs> Yeah, but I, I, like like a better mother- motherboard or a better uh, what's it called um, cooling system, what have you. Yes, but I will say this power to supply, all the people: different power supply. Yes, to all the people out there who who think PC gaming is so expensive, expensive and unreachable, um, I could make you a gaming PC just as powerful and as smooth as any of the consoles out right now for around. 500 or less probably around 400 i could probably do 400 if you already have a monitor in a case i could i could lower it even third uh further we're, we're gonna, so we're it's, gonna we're gonna do that i'm already i'm already stating right now i I'm, i asked geo offline to make me a gaming pc now we're gonna put it to the test and we're gonna make a video okay. how about that and tell them 
Tell them I've already helped you make a gaming PC you did. before. You did. Yeah. It was a Steam yeah. box. And, it was a Steam uh, box. And I have a 400, no, not 400, sorry, four terabyte hard drive in there. Uh, it's not really able to pay, play uh, the like Xbox 360 level games that well, unfortunately. Yeah. yeah. But at the <laughs> but, time, it was good, right? At the time, it was fantastic. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, like, I can play yeah, so, two level games. Okay. Uh, but, but, and I didn't spend that much on it either. So, no. yeah. So, if anything, I need, I need to upgrade badly. Yeah. And uh, I would like to be able to play, you know, Death Stranding on maximum settings. Yeah. Now, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm being too um, guarded here because the way I read it was like they were trying to get exclusives and just keep it on PlayStation forever. That's the way I read it. Now, if they were doing it like year-long exclusives, then yeah, that's not as bad because – and also it's bad for developers, I mean, I mean, they it, did that with Final it, Fantasy VII Remake. It's a year-long exclusive on Sony. It'll be it'll be releasing on Xbox uh, in, within the year. Yeah, yeah. It's it's bad for developers too, though. You know, um, and the only it's agree. You you don't you don't think only selling your game on one platform is bad for your business? So this is why it is so enticing for developers to do these exclusivity deals is because of the amount of money that's being thrown to them initially and that's why you see that that's that's what was happening ex exactly with the epic game store especially with uh, developers that are like indie developers because yeah, but, they're getting yeah. a huge influx of cash right from the get-go before even selling a game and yes that, uh, okay go ahead okay yes but but there, there's a there's a big difference here, and the difference is there's a difference between getting funded to build a game and going to studios and trying to buy their already games that they're working on and hoard them on your system. That's, that's the difference. Th that's the difference that I'm trying to to make a line here, right? Okay. I'm not against funding a new game. No, no, don't get me wrong. Uh, Sony saved uh, Street Fighter. Sony saved Street Fighter because uh, when Street Fighter 4 uh, was, was kind of like dying off and the new generation was coming, Capcom didn't have enough money to make a new Street Fighter. So Sony came along and they're like, hey, we'll help you build this game and um, we'll, we'll pay for it. But it's going to be exclusive on uh, PlayStation. And then like a year later, it went to PC. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about already games that are being developed that studios are trying that 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 studios have money for they're already developing them they want to release them to a wide range of gamers and sony coming and say no 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 here here take this money and and just we'll just keep it on our system i don't see that's huge, i don't see a huge difference though especially i see a huge difference especially especially if the they need an influx of cash or you know profit from the get-go because studios you know, they're not doing this for free and they're losing money as they're developing games. That's why games as a service is yeah. so enticing to studios that, because they can keep developing it as they're getting money coming in. as some kind yes. of revenue stream coming in. So, yeah. like, I don't see a huge difference between a game that's already been developed and getting cash in to assist before selling the game versus a game that's in development or a game that hasn't even started development yet. I think it's, I, it's, see it. I think it's very, very similar, more similar than, than uh, different. It, it is similar, but the way I'm, the, this is the way I'm viewing it. I'm not viewing it as studios going to Sony and asking for help. I'm viewing it, the, the, the rumor says is that they're going to all the studios and trying to hoard all the games. Mm. That's the rumor. That's what I'm against. I don't, I don't think it's, good to just go everywhere and try to buy up all the games that's a mon monopolistic type behavior gotcha. you know yes that's what i'm against i'm not against seeding a uh, indie developer to make a new game i'm not against helping a game uh that normally wouldn't even come out unless they helped them i'm against going around trying to hoard all the games and and lock them on your system that's what i'm against because these developers aren't asking Sony for that. The, the, the rumor is, is that Sony's going to them and trying to, to get their games, not them going to them and asking for help. I think that's totally different. And, and that's, that's, 
it's very complicated. <laughs> this is this is very complicated, and I, you know, I th I appreciate uh, your view, and I think your view is very valid, and I, um, and I I think I'm making a view, but I'm trying to narrow my view down to a, a type of behavior that is kind of greedy. Anti consumer. I, I yeah, it's anti consumer. No, no, no. Yeah, so I appreciate it. I yeah. Um, so, uh, I think, I think we covered that pretty well. Um, Hey, I know this is going to be a heated issue. So if you have an opinion, you know, leave a comment, Yeah, let us, <laughs> let us know what let you know think. How you, how you yeah. feel. Hey everyone. Thanks for watching this episode of games. I speak. If you like the episode, please subscribe and leave a comment below and we'll see you all next time.